I hate the fact that I even have to make today's video because I have not made one of these videos in quite some time, but it's not even a hot take to say out loud that MLB The Show has not felt this dry or stale since what, MLB The Show 18 when they put out Bobbleheads and Immortals? If you did not play MLB The Show 18, it is widely considered to be the most hated MLB The Show of all time because the amount of grinding and the amount of collecting you had to do offline, it felt like homework. It was horrific. It was the worst MLB The Show by far because of that. And a lot of people feel like MLB The Show 23 is kind of MLB The Show 18 2.0. It is a better game. I'm not gonna lie. The gameplay is actually a whole lot better. I feel like content has been better. But ever since set four came around, I'm getting MLB The Show 18 vibes. Now, if you're enjoying MLB The Show 23, awesome, more power to you. But we're gonna go in and talk about the five biggest issues in this year's game and what they should fix going into 2024. Also, I just wanna say out loud that this is not perfect. Personal. I want MLB The Show to succeed at the highest level, but I do have a couple issues. So there are five things that I want to talk about and hopefully change going into 2024. Number one, chase packs and chase players. Number two, we're going to talk about captain cards because I love captain cards, but they've not been utilized properly this year. Number three, team affinity. I despise team affinity this year. Number four is the method of grinding in MLB The Show. Right now, they are focusing on CPU grinding. And then last but not least, we're going to talk about whether or not sets or seasons should come back in MLB. 24. Now, if you want to skip to any of those points, I'll put timestamps in the video so I'm not wasting your time. I'm going to try and keep this as short and simple and to the point as possible. Issue number one, chase packs and chase players. As you can see, Fernando Tatis Jr., in my opinion, is still the best shortstop in the game, but you can't use them unless you use a wild card. But if you guys don't remember, Fernando Tatis Jr. was a chase pack player. Now, a couple things I hate about chase players. One, they kind of feel pay to win. If you guys never played Advanced Warfare, that's a Call of Duty game. They had loot boxes that had the best versions of certain guns. You cannot get Fernando Tatis Jr. by grinding the game. You cannot get him by playing ranked seasons. You can only get him through packs. Now, I fully understand the premise of chase players because they have to be rare. They have to be a juicy card. Otherwise, what's the point of having a chase player? But my biggest issue is the fact that I cannot use the Commerce Comet who I pulled in a pack. He is a chase player. Do you know how hard it is to pull a chase pack, let alone pull the chase player or how expensive they are in the market? The fact that chase players are not core cards, players that you can use from set one all the way until the end of the game, it blows my mind and that should not be allowed. As you can see, Sammy Sosa, he is a core card. What does that mean? You can use him no matter what time of the year it is. He does not have any limitations according to the new sets and seasons. You can use him whenever you want. So when set five comes around, I can no longer use chase player Ellie De La Cruz unless I have him with a wild card, but that means I can't use the wild card on a captain's card, on other chase players. Chase players should be core cards. Otherwise, I mean, we're gonna have to push back because this is not good. Also, one more thing before we move on to captain cards. It blows my mind that they do not tell you the odds of pulling a chase pack in standard packs. It's borderline criminal that they just throw out these chase players. They're the best cards in the game. They're behind packs and they don't even tell us how good of a chance we have at pulling them. That, that's terrible in my opinion. I think that they should be core players and the odds of pulling a chase pack should be in the game but let's move on. Moving on over to captain cards. I love captain cards. The only problem is they haven't really put in any captain cards that are worth using aside from the durability captain, Cal Ripken Jr. and the shortstop captain, Jimmy Rollins. I mean, it's pretty evident that no one uses the other ones. I mean, the fact that I can have Ken Griffey Jr. and Cody Bellinger at secondary positions and still have diamond defense because of a Cal Ripken card, that's pretty cool. I love captains. But the fact that some of these captains are core and some of them are, I don't understand that at all. How come I can use Jimmy Rollins whenever I want but Cal Ripken Jr., I have to use a wild card on him. So two changes I would make to captain cards. One, every single captain card is a core card. And if you use a captain, sets and seasons do not factor in. I don't care if there's a card from set one or a card from set 857. You can use whoever you want if you use a captain's card. I feel like that makes sense. Like why would I use half of these captain cards if 80% of the cards that I could be using are now locked behind sets? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Oh great, the bane of my existence. 
Team Affinity. Let's talk about it. Now, clearly, I am not a fan of Team Affinity because as you can see, I have not completed a single one this year. And that's not because I don't want to grind MLB The Show. I mean, clearly, I will grind this game with the best of them. For three consecutive years, I've gotten Grady Sizemore to one of one Super Fractor 5 within a day, so I can grind MLB The Show. It's just the fact that you got to do the same programs over and over and over to get 97 overalls. The 97s are only in the game to fill a binder so you can collect cards and unlock a free 99 in four months. This 97 D Strange Gordon would be perfect for the 99 Bunt Squad, for the 99 Speed Squad, but I'm not trying to play 5,000 Conquests and CPU games to get this card. I'm not going to do it. And aside from sets and seasons, I feel like the biggest tipping point of people giving up on MLB The Show 23 or not is this right here. Team Affinity and the way that you grind cards. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to issue number four, and that is the method of grinding that they have chosen for this game, and that is CPU grinding, which I despise. In my opinion, Ranked Seasons has become completely irrelevant. No one cares about these rewards. No one cares about going 12-0 in Battle Royale anymore. When's the last time, honestly, when's the last time you see a creator have a Road to World Series or someone post one win away from World Series? It doesn't happen anymore because it's pointless. If you play events, battle royale, or ranked seasons, and you do that for a week straight, you're going to get left behind because there's so much content that they put out that does not involve online grinding or online stats. You're going to get left behind because you're not grinding against the CPU every second of your free time. Like, honestly, unless you're a single person, you don't have a family or kids, or you do content creation full time, there's absolutely no way to balance online play with offline play. And it's because they don't really allow you to grind these programs online. So, do you see? See how we have all of these rewards for making division series or championship series? Why can't we put in vouchers that you can exchange for offline program points. So let's say that you make it to World Series, you get that one World Series player. Imagine if they gave you a voucher that you could turn into any program or team affinity that you want and get 25 to 30,000 stars. How sick would that be? Maybe you win five games in a row or 10 games in 24 hours. Maybe they can give you an online voucher to exchange in team affinity with whatever team affinity that you want, but at least you're grinding online and having fun as opposed to playing against Kyle Freeland and the Rockies for the 9,000th time on CPU. So we've talked about chase players, captain cards, team affinity, and CPU grinding. Let's talk about sets and seasons. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I actually really like sets one through two in MLB The Show 23. Like I 100% see what they're going for. But just like everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked in the Avatar, everything changed when set four came out. I mean, the fact that I have to wait 36 days until set five comes out and set four already feels dead on arrival, like it's completely pointless. I don't know what they're gonna do. Now the saving grace is the fact that in set six, every single card is going to be unlocked so you can finally build teams and use captains and not use wild cards like i'm excited for set six but that's a bad thing so the first issue i have with sets and seasons is the fact that i think they're way too long they need to be cut in half but then again that kind of just feels like how mlb the show used to put out content just kind of every single week one other big issue i have with sets and seasons we're getting a repeat of the same cards and we're getting 99s replaced with 97s why in god's green earth would i spend my free time doing team affinity programs again and again and again to replace my 99 Bryce Harper with pretty much the exact same version of Bryce Harper but a 97 overall you want me to do homework for a lesser card no right now the only Mickey Mantle card you can use because of the sets and seasons without using the wild card is the 97 overall completely useless set three Mickey Mantle they replaced 99 Commerce Comet who again was a chase player with the 97 overall Mickey Mantle that no one is ever going to use now again if you want to use the Commerce Comet you can use the wild card but then again you can't use the durability captain or Fernando Tatis or Joe Mau or any of the other chase players because they're all locked I'm sorry, it pisses me off. And one more thing that just grinds my gears about sets and seasons. It took me forever to get 99 Commerce Comet to Parallel 5. What was the point of grinding him to Parallel 5? It takes way too long to parallel a hitter in MLB The Show. And now that we have sets and seasons in place, the fact that cards retire, by the time you finally get your favorite card to Parallel 5, he's going to get locked. It's just... it. It's, it's whack. Now, one thing I do want to talk about gameplay because you might be wondering, Fuzzy, you do not have gameplay on your list of biggest issues. And I would say no, because it's actually pretty decent. Do not take that as me saying gameplay is perfect and they should never work on it ever again. But gameplay wise, I think that this is the best MLB The Show we've gotten 
And since maybe MLB The Show 16 or like the first week of MLB The Show 20 or 21, I can't remember, they ruined one of those games with a hitting patch. Some of you might say that gameplay issues are a bigger issue than offline grinding. Like some of you might not actually sitting down at your desk and watching YouTube videos or movies while you grind out all of these things. It might be fun for you. Maybe some of you like the pacing of sets and seasons. I have no idea. Maybe you feel like it's a new game every single time they come out. But for me, these five issues have kind of made MLB The Show as stale as ever again. Chase players, they kind of feel pay to win. The fact that they're not core cards blows my mind. Number two, captain cards. I love captain cards. They're probably my favorite addition to MLB The Show since they introduced the parallel system. They just have to rework them a little bit and make them core as well as if you use them, you actually don't have to have yourself restricted by these sets and seasons. Number three, Team Affinity. Please, for the love of God, lower the requirements of Team Affinity. And number four, CPU grinding. If we're going to do Team Affinity, change the method of grinding for MLB The Show 24. Allow us to get vouchers online, whether that's in BR, events, or anything. Please let us use our free time how we want. You are forcing us to grind against the CPU. Do not force your customers to do anything. That is not a recipe for success. Allow for a variety of ways to earn cards. And then finally, sets and seasons. Let me know in the comments what do you make of the implementation of sets in MLB The Show 23. Do you like them? Do you think that it's a good idea on paper but in the actual game? The fact that cards get locked and the whole point of captain cards kind of go away because half of the cards that could have been on that team are now locked. Do you think that sets ruins MLB The Show? What do you make of this year's game? Because I can promise you guys this, they're working on MLB The Show 24 right now. They will probably see the comments on this video because we don't really do these videos often. I hope that they watch this and understand it's not personal. I just want MLB The Show to be the best sports game out there. And even though I love sets one and two, I was having the most fun I've had in quite some time. Set four completely ruined it for me. It's the same thing over and over and I can't stand that. It's very MLB The Show 18-esque. I mean, they do cool things every so often like these pennant chase packs or the 99 World Series program, something like that. But if you guys want to see MLB The Show 23 in a nutshell, here is set four, Alan Trammell from that program we just talked about. And here is set two or three, I can't remember what it was. Here's the other Alan Trammell. It's essentially the same card with the power inversed. Why do sets exist if we're just putting out the same five legends every five weeks? Thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on MLB The Show 23. Be as constructive and positive as possible. Do not be a jerk. And even if you have criticism of me, if you think I'm being a baby, let me know. I'm down to hear it.